Hey up troops, it's a little sin here again, and this time we're going to be talking about the new EMP impact grenade. So just before we get started here, just a random story. A friend of mine yesterday was telling me that... Absolutely covered in piss. So, sorry, did the EMP just... Was, a, was the mic off for nine seconds there? Did the electronics just cut out? I was, because it's a really interesting story anyway, I'll tell you another time. The EMP impact grenade is going to be a tremendous addition to Year 7 Season 3, in my opinion, and we'll get into why. This I don't mean this to be, like, clickbaity and, like, please watch, but there's some really interesting tests that I did with Bandit and Cade, where it's not just as straightforward as the video in the season reveal makes out. The other interesting thing as well, which I mentioned in the video, is a lot of the talk at the minute is all about wall denial. However, there's a lot of other utility which is going to be able to do disabled, which means you can do things you wouldn't normally be able to do using the EMP impact grenade. So for those of you that aren't super techy like me, I didn't know what EMP meant. EMP stands for electromagnetic pulse. I just googled it, but now you know if you didn't already. If you did, then ignore the last eight seconds. I don't stick this in every video, but if you do enjoy the video today, do me a favor, sub to the channel. It doesn't cost you a penny, but it makes me day. So if you do, thanks very much and cheers. Right, enough electromagnetic waffling. Let's get stuck into it. So getting things started then, who gets access to the EMP impact grenade? I've put your little graphic on the screen. I haven't made that, but thank you to whoever has. Um, I found it on Twitter, I think. Um, but the guys who get it are Sledge, Monty, Blackbeard, Dockerby, Lion, Gridlock, Knock, and Osa. So that's eight in total, plus Recruit. Although, obviously, if you're playing ranked and unranked, you can't really play Recruit unless you don't have any operators unlocked. So just go over that again. Sledge, Monty... Blackbeard, Dockerby, Lion, Gridlock, Knock, and Osa, plus Recruit. Right then, let's get started with the basics of it, and there it is on the right-hand side, the new EMP Impact Grenade. Essentially, just a smaller version of what Thatcher has, however, there's three main differences that you need to know. Firstly, the radius or area of effect with Thatcher's EMP is 5 meters. With the new EMP Impact Grenade, it's 2 meters. When Thatcher throws the EMP on the floor, anything that it disables, the disablement lasts for 15 seconds. With this new EMP impact grenade, the disablement lasts for 9 seconds. The other big difference as well is if we were playing Thatcher here, we'd probably throw the EMP on the floor here and it would roll up to the wall. It would like dribble up to the wall and roll across the floor. It doesn't go off straight away, it's on like a bit of a timer. The EMP impact grenade is as the name suggests, it's much like a, uh, an impact grenade on defense. If I throw this on the floor here, it's not going to roll, it goes off straight away. So wherever you throw it, whatever you're trying to disable, you need to throw it at whatever you're trying to disable. They're the three main differences. So if we jump on our drone now then, and we have a look on the inside of this wall, you can see that Bandit, thanks very much mate, has very kindly set us up two shock wires, or two Bandit batteries, whatever you want to call it, on the inside of CCTV wall. And you'll see that I've very purposely put the batteries at either end of the wall, because I want to demonstrate the radius here. So, we know there's a battery here, and we know there's a battery here. Now, when it comes to throwing the EMP impact grenade, like I said to you before, we have a two meter radius. If I throw it on the left hand side of the wall, when this goes off, you're gonna see that the battery on this side of the wall will be disabled. The battery on this side of the wall won't be because it's a two meter radius. And if we use the ping as a measuring device, this wall is about four meters wide. So throw this on the left hand side of the wall. As you can see, the left hand side battery or right hand side on the inside is now disabled, but the one on the right very much isn't. Now, you've got to work out your distances, and if we were playing Thatcher here, we'd just throw the grenade here, the EMP grenade, and everything would be fine. However, it's very much different with the EMP impact grenade. I feel like you're going to have to do a bit of research, or a bit of sort of an intel, a bit of investigation to find out what's on the wall and where it is. If you throw this in the middle of the wall at the top, the odds are that's probably further than two meters away from the batteries, and you're not going to disable them. So you've really got to find out where the batteries are, or whatever it is you're trying to disable, You've got to do a bit of investigation first before you start slinging them around because you only get two of them. So just going back to what I was going to say then, if you throw this in the middle, will we get both of them? Let's find out. So we're going to throw it at the middle top. And as you can see there, neither of the two batteries are now disabled because it's only a two meter radius. So you've really got to be careful with where you throw the batteries. I think that's a really important point and that's a really good example there. You know, you know I don't know why I've got my shield out. Put that away, Andy. So you see there, you think if you just walk up to the wall and you throw I think we threw it about here walk up to the wall and throw the EMP impact there, you think you're going to be okay. It disabled neither battery. This is why I'm saying I think sometimes you're going to have to get your drone out. Obviously, there's a drone all here that you can use, but this drone all is quite often watched. But um, When you use this drone all, by the way, and this is completely random, but don't just drive in and come round. 
which is usually somebody top red who's going to be watching this drone hole. As soon as you come through, jump straight across to the next drone hole, like this. And more often than not, the person on top red isn't going to... Well, I mean, depends where you play, obviously. But the person on top red is not waiting for a drone to just go like, yoink. They're waiting for a drone to dribble across the floor. So as soon as you come through, jump straight across, and your drone will generally survive. It's completely random. I don't know why I brought that up, because we're not talking about drones. But anyway... That's something for you today. <laughs> so yeah, make sure that you drone it out, or at least you've got some intel. And um, and don't just throw it at the wall and hope for the best, is my, is my point there. So we're back in front of the wall again. We'll get back on the drone. This time, we've got our mate Cade. Now, Cade has put a core on the ceiling, which, granted, I know is not the best thing to do, because if we know where the core is, we're just going to go to this window and shoot it off the ceiling. However, this is for demonstration purposes. I want to show you something. So... If we now think, oh, it's Bandit here, we'll just throw it at this bottom of this panel and at least one of the batteries will be uh, will be disabled. Obviously, that won't be the case because now the Cade Claw is above on the ceiling that I somehow have missed that ping. That's embarrassing. It's now on the ceiling there. So if we throw the EMP at the wall in the middle here, again, we're more than two meters away. So there's also, it's worth taking note here, if you play Bandit or Cade, it's worth taking note that where you place your Cade Claw or your batteries is probably going to matter now. Whereas I don't think it mattered too much before. However, what I will say is about placing things on roofs. The EMP grenade goes through four ceilings, walls, and whatever else. So if we're above the foot, above the wall here, we can get a ping on it just so I can see where it is. We know it's roughly, you know, the middle of the wall, back one. We throw the EMP here instead, and all of a sudden, now the electricity has stopped, and the core is disabled for nine seconds. So, like I said to you before, I know I'm repeating myself here, but it's a really valid point. This impact EMP grenade is not anywhere near as good as Thatcher's grenade. It's still going to do a job. However, you're going to have to do a bit more research and have a bit more of an idea of what it is you're trying to disable before you just throw it at the wall willy-nilly. So just to put a rumor to bed very quickly, I've seen on various threads on Reddit and stuff that the EMP impact will only disable one device. I've shown you when the batteries are split apart that it can only stop one because of the distance. However, it will disable anything, any amount of electronic devices that are within the range of the EMP. So we can see we've got both batteries next to each other. I just throw it at the floor there. You'll see that both are disabled. So it's not limited to one device like I've seen some people talking about elsewhere. So a lot of the talk that I've seen about this EMP impact grenade is all about wall denial. You know, well, we don't have to bankade anymore. We don't have to worry about bandit. We're going to get the wall open so much easier, which is definitely true. You know, we've just proved that up there on this wall here. However, there's far more to this EMP impact grenade than wall denial. Let me jump on the drone here. We've got Jaeger on rafters. We've got an ADS here on panel one. We've got an ADS here on the door. So you see the ADS there on the door. We can see that the wall's here. Therefore, the ADS is a lot less than two meters through that wall. Let's just say we have a teammate working with us here and we want to disable this ADS. We've got a sledge or uh, someone else with nades. We can then throw the CMP at the wall here. That ADS is now completely disabled for nine seconds. Obviously, we've got the ADS up here as well. You're not usually going to have both. However, if you've got the ADS up there, we can come through the wall this side as well. We can disable this ADS. Let me just ping you one more time. We can disable this ADS this side as well. That's that ADS destroyed as well, not destroyed, disabled, but for nine seconds. So clearing out areas to use grenades and other utility that'll get absorbed by uh, WMI discs or ADSs or whatever it might be, is going to be absolutely huge. People think it's all just about wall denial. People have been talking about all, all about wall denial. Clearing out areas like anchor points like this with ADSs, using those, um, using those EMP impact grenades to stop this kind of stuff, I think is going to be really useful as well, especially at higher levels of gameplay. A lot of people are just talking about wall denial, which it will be useful for, but Maverick still exists. You know, Maverick is still going to be your main way of getting that wall open, in my opinion. But when you need to stop a uh, an ADS or whatever it might be that we'll move on to in a second, I think it's getting overlooked for its ability to stop that kind of thing as well. I just thought what we haven't done this video yet is uh, shoot the radio. Right, that's good. Right, so we're in uh, we're in oil pit now. We're pushing downstairs, and this is another example of where it's going to come in useful. We've got Malusi Banshee here, which is one of the most disruptive and difficult things to get past because obviously it only opens when you're next to it. Ignore that Malusi's playing blue. And we need to push down here. Well, this is where else it's going to come in useful as well. For people who want to be a bit more aggressive, you can just throw that at the Malusi Banshee. It doesn't even activate as you come past for nine seconds. That's it. The defenders won't know exactly where that sound is. They'll 100% know where the Banshees are. But being able to disable things like this, obviously it's only 9 seconds, so don't hang around it like I just did. It's so... Being in a Banshee is one of the most frustrating things to get out of, man. Um, but things like that as well, again, people think it's wall denial more than anything else, but we've just shown their ADSs, Banshees in certain areas of the map. It's going to be really useful to counter that utility as well. 
Another great use of the MP impact grenade is to stop this person, Clash. So Clash is walking towards her, zapping us as she goes. Like, it's really annoying, isn't it? Like, ah, oh, I'm using the wrong keyboard. There she is, here she goes. Right, well, if I throw that at her, all of a sudden now I'm using the other keyboard. I'm zapping to my heart's content. It's just not working. At this point, attack and get her out of the game. It's a really, really good nine second counter to Clash as well. Another great feature of the MP Impact is to deal with this absolute unit of a defender. It, if Maestro isn't in the top five defenders, I swear, he's so good, man. His gun's unreal, his utility's unreal, he has impact, he has a bailey for making rotates, he's quality, man. I think he's so underused in, uh, in lower elo. Anyway, we all know when it comes to getting rid of an evil eye, um, you can punch it. Someone like Osa, for example, has literally no way of destroying one of these unless, uh, unless the, the lens gets opened by Maestro. You know, if he gets on cams and does this thing and opens it up, then we can shoot it, right? But if Maestro doesn't do that and he just uses it for utility, there's nothing we can do other than crack the glass of the bubble like this. However, you can still hear sound and it still gives info and you just can't do anything about it. However, the MP impact grenade now allows us to throw an EMP impact at the Maestro cam. Not only will that disable the Maestro cam for nine seconds, it will open the glass momentarily whilst it's disabled for nine seconds. So let me show you. We throw that at the, at the camera. And now you can see, even when the glass is uh, broken, or when the glass is not broken, it opens. We can now destroy those. That is unbelievably strong. Get Trying to get rid of a Maestro Evil Eye at one end of a corridor, at one end of a site where it's got all the information it needs. Even if you get close to it and, destroy, and, uh, and break the glass like that, destroy the glass, you're still getting information for defenders through sound. Being able to throw that at range, and then just shoot it to completely destroy the Evil Eye, is absolutely fantastic. This is just a, a, a bit of a, a something I've picked up on, really. I've seen people using the MP impact grenade to disable all sorts of utility. Like, I've seen a lesion mine on the ground and someone's thrown an EMP impact at it. You can literally just shoot it or, or, or melee it when you get close enough. And I think a rune is a good example here. If we use the MP impact grenade to, to disable this gate, we throw it above there and that, that's now disabled. This is only going to be disabled, disabled for nine seconds, right? So in nine seconds time, which we're probably not that far away from now, It'll come back online, right? However, if you throw the impact grenade at the gates, that'll burn the gates instead. So the impact grenade doesn't actually go off. It just burns the gate. And that's now going to be disabled for 30 seconds before a Rooney can turn that back on. So, you know, don't just throw these EMP impacts at any bit of utility you see on the floor. I've seen some, like, a few people say that you'll be able to disable C4s and smoke canisters. And I, I just don't think that's realistic, personally. You know, if a C4 is coming over towards you, the best thing to always try and do is shoot the C4 out the air. Not wait for the C4 to get within two meters of you and then throw an impact on it, which I haven't got any left, as you can see from the red writing. But as the C4 is like flying over to you, no way is it a good idea for wait to that, that C4 to land and then you try and time an impact grenade. Just try and shoot it out the air. If there's a C4 flying at you, your odds are pretty slim on surviving anyway. Um, but yeah, don't always think that using the MP impact to stop all utility is the best way of doing things because, like I say, if there's a goo mine on these stairs here, it's always a better idea to come up and just knife it or shoot it as you're going up the stairs rather than wasting utility like the EMP impact, which can, you know, give you so much more value than, than burning an Aruni gate for nine seconds or destroying a lesion mine for nine seconds. So my final point about the EMP impact then is first, I think it's going to be a really good addition to the, uh, to the operator gadget pool. However, I just want to remind you that it only works on electronic gadgets. We've got a bulletproof here that we haven't talked about yet, but it disabled bulletproof cameras as well. We've also got a frost mat. I mean, seeing this just gives me PTSD, man. I die to so many frost mats. It's embarrassing, but there's a frost mat. There's a bulletproof camera. This is electronic. This is not. So when you see things like uh, Goyo Vulcan canisters, not electronic, so it doesn't disable them. When it's a physical, a physical piece of utility like this, as opposed to electronic, it does nothing to these. So let me throw this on the corner here. You'll see that the bulletproof gets, uh, gets disabled for nine seconds, but the frost mat very much doesn't. As you can see, that's not working anymore. This is very much working, and being this close to it is making me really, really nervous. So that's my final point. Remember, the physical utility, deployable shield, for, I think that's fairly obvious, the deployable shield can't be really disabled, but you know what I mean. Anything that's not electronic, Vulcan canisters, frost mats, for example, doesn't get affected by it. And I'll sacrifice myself to show you. Ah! God, I hate that noise. So there we have it. That's the new EMP impact grenade, new for Year 7 Season 3 Brutal Swarm. I think it's going to mix things up with the way you take certain sides. Certainly Clubhouse and other anchor points where there's ADSs and wall denial that you need to disable. I know I say this every video, but I also stream on Twitch as well. Every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday, 
from 8 p.m uk time there's been a bunch of people from youtube come over and say hello if you want to be one of them as well get involved the usernames below but it's exactly the same as youtube on twitch other than that that wraps us up again for another one and i'll see you next time cheers